How's it going, everybody? This is going to be your one-week review of Marvel Stray Force. What have we accomplished so far? Are we still having fun? What are our plans in the future for this? And what faults have we found along the way? All that more in this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you do, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And let's get into it. How's it going, everybody? This is going to be our week one end review on the new account. Uh, not that I'm going to be not doing this anymore. Just that we are finished week one. Actually, we're finished eight days. So week one would have been on a Sunday, which I don't make videos on Sunday. So what I want to do in this video is I'll talk to you about all the things we've gathered, the experience we've had, the changes that we've made to make sure our progression is going as fast as possible. You can see I'm actually above where I used to be in gold. I'm at 2.9. So we're actually running a gold, um, not a gold deficit, but we're running in the green on gold. My cores are way down because I've been coring a little bit too hard on energy, but I am level 43 as a result. As far as characters that I have unlocked, well, we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65 characters unlocked, which if you divide that by 11, what's that? Uh, um, oof. Sorry, if you divide that by fives, that's how many teams we can get. Is that eight teams, nine teams? Nope, it's a lot more than that. It'd be about 12 teams. I got about 12 teams that I could be using for Blitz, which I think is fantastic. As far as meaningful characters that we have unlocked, we're still leaning deep into the Gambit, the Doc Ock, the Venom. I'm now doing a lot of Wave 1 uh, investments here. I think it's just a really good early game. I got that Thor unlocked. He's got a really cool passive where he's putting the hammer down whenever too many Avengers get hit. And aside from that, nothing has really changed much except I've unlocked some legendary characters. And we're going to talk about that legendary unlock experience because that is a new experience. We unlocked Doc Ock Day 2 from the last video. And since then, we've now unlocked Fury. We unlocked uh, Magneto. And we've unlocked Star-Lord. We could probably go unlock Phoenix if we wanted to right now, but I don't want to invest in the characters needed for her at this time. We'll talk about that when we go to the legendary section. But I'm very happy with the amount of characters I've unlocked. And this is just, I've spent zero dollars. I will spend zero dollars on this account forever. This has just been from orbs that we're getting from various locations, from the web milestone. We're getting one premium orb a day there. We're getting lots of basic orbs from uh, just farming nodes and everything like that. And then they actually introduced something that was new for me, which is the the streak, the save the world streak. So spending campaign energy, where you're getting lots of milestone one orbs or legacy one orbs and legacy two orbs, as well as a bunch of other goodies. And that does seem to help you unlock characters very, very quickly, which I think is fantastic. Aside from that, the stores, we now have the arena store unlocked. I'm not sure if we had that before. I have the red store unlocked right now, but we're not going to be doing anything with this. We don't really get red star orbs, um, as we'll talk about when we reach a blitz, which is... We, I'm also going to talk about some of the things that I think are bad, that I've reported to developers, and I think they are going to be making some changes. But as far as challenges go, I've been able to keep up to date with my challenges. Sunday, they let you do all the challenges. So every single challenge I was able to get up to, I think it was tier six for all of them. And I can't do the next tier I, until I hit a certain account level, which is why we put a lot of priority on building our account level. And we're still only coring for energy. Uh, as far as the ISO campaign, we're still very far from unlocking that. We're level 43. We've got a lot of achievements along the way. We now have Hulk at four stars. He's the only character that we do have at four stars. And for Arena, this is the team I've been using. I have now Gambit, Doc Ock, and the three Wave 1 Avengers. I've climbed up to rank 240. I can get around rank 200, which is great, because now I'm earning 100 power cores a day and about 550 uh, Arena credits, which lets me continue to buy characters. And I'm currently only farming Vulture from the Arena campaign. Uh, milestones, we're hitting a lot of great milestones. So I'm actually been spending about 1 to 2 million gold a day. I have no idea how I'm keeping up with gold, but I, apparently I am. Uh, with Save the World, we're still maxing because we're doing too many core resets, but that's fine. And World Warrior, this is going to be important. Another reason why you should get into a very, very active alliance. Uh, we're getting very, very deep into this as opposed to other new alliances that uh, probably don't get as far because we just have crazy participation from our, our new guys that are going super hard on everything, right? Uh, after Milestones, we still haven't unlocked the Events tab. We just have these legendary characters still. And we're going pretty hard on this. So the Phoenix, the first one was free. The second Phoenix, which would unlock Phoenix, I need five Mystic Controllers. I have five Mystic Controllers. I have no interest in building them up to unlock Phoenix. She just wouldn't do anything for me right now. Star-Lord, I was able to get him unlocked. Now I need Cosmic Heroes. This I'll just let happen over time. Star-Lord is not a character I care to uh, race for. Magneto, I need five X-Men characters as well. This is just going to happen over time. This will, I'll eventually get just by building up the Extreme team. 
Um, Magneto was replaced by the Extreme Team, so there's no real reason to rush for him. Nick Fury, I recently unlocked. He needs cosmic villains or heroes for higher members. Uh, again, this is just going to be a slow burn now that I have him unlocked, which is very easy. Only two star characters. I'll leave him there. You know, he's fine there. It's fun to have him. He's probably the only other legendary besides Doc Ock that is going to be useful in our climb through the mid game. Doc Ock, I'm going to need uh, Wave 1 Avengers or Defenders at three stars for the next one. This one I am actively working towards. I am farming Captain America. I'm farming Black Widow. I'm farming um thor whenever i can get to his node i'll be farming thor as well we're getting hulk shards just from doing achievements and we're going to be getting doc ock built up as quickly as we can because he's definitely the most important legendary character that is currently available to us right now and iron man I, i'm not going to be getting shield characters higher i'm just not i'm not worried about that that'll happen over time um there's absolutely no rush it'll probably happen when we get our fury done and then the Extremely Sinister event, we are still farming this first node. We're getting Catalyst, we're getting Experience, we're getting some Basic Orb Fragments. It's good stuff. And I'm excited to say that I think next week, after this one's done, there's going to be another showcase starting, and that's going to be for the new Hive Mind team. So if you're playing right now, keep an eye out for that. They're going to have a story mode like this as well, which you're going to be able to... Or sorry, not a story mode, but a test drive mode where we should be able to get Symbiote Character Shards, which is going to be fantastic. So I'm very excited for that. All right. Let's get this going. So, uh, this is all just new stuff. As far as the campaigns go, I've been able to keep up with all the campaigns. I've cleared all the campaigns. I'm waiting to hit level 70 to do the next hero campaign. For the villains, I'm waiting to hit level 48 to do the next villains campaign. For the Nexus, we're now waiting for level 46 to do the next, ne ne the next Nexus campaign. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. And the reason we're able to get through all these campaigns as we are is because we use those promo codes we talked about in the last video. So, once again... Make sure if you just started, you put in the promo code on the new player gift cards, all capitals, and then Venom Free, all capitals, and then Welcome, all lowercase. It's a bunch of rewards. It's going to really help you kind of propel your way through this game super quickly. And keep farming all those sinister characters that we talked about. All right, so Blitz. Uh, we hit level 40, and we were able to get Blitz Squad. So we talked about all the characters I have currently unlocked, and now you can see all the teams that I have and just like I was telling you guys, I think the best thing you could do is have one big character with four level ones because you're not going to want to build up all the characters. And you see, I have exactly that. So Gambit is spearheading the first team, then Doc Ock, Venom, Surfer. I have a full wave one team because I had them all sort of leveled up. They're doing their thing. Sinister Six leftovers. And then again, one character carrying the load. So we got Shang-Chi carrying one, Phi Lavelle carrying one, uh, Zemo carrying one. Uh, Nick Fury carrying one, Cyclops trying to carry one, and then we have a bunch of level 15 leftovers that we were forced to build to kind of get through the first couple levels of that hero campaign, and I'm basically using them to lose. Um, I'm excited to say that I'm able to complete the Orb Assault milestones. It's, you only get one day to do this. I finished this in, I think, three or four rotations, which was very, very quick. Lots of great resources from that. So I think that part of the new player experience is great. And then we have this, which is just, this is just awful. So, ah, I only have one character at four stars. It's just Hulk, just from uh, the achievements. You are only allowed to bring in four yellow star characters to this, this blitz, and that's horrible. It used to make sense back in the day when red stars mattered so much, and it's not like seven red stars were not very common, now there were six, five. Like, four was the average. So people really wanted to fight for these red star orbs. That's not the case anymore. It used to be they would literally be able to sell characters better if that gave you an additional team to be used so that you can compete in this Blitz event. Well, that no longer makes sense. And I've given them the advice that this requirement should be completely taken down. If they need to just completely scrap this Blitz and recode it so that it's the same as the Orb Assault, but it's just red stars and there's no requirements to get in, it just opens up when you're level 40... Uh, or 42 that's what they should do um so the good part about doing this experience with you guys is i'm also seeing the faults in the game being able to um report that to people the next fault that we see is in the alliance so i cannot donate to the alliance until level 50 but if we look over here at the alliance war it requires level 45 so by the time me and all my friends in this alliance level 45 where our alliance is still going to be level 1. And to level your alliance from 1 to 20 takes time. you got to donate cores to your alliance. or Sorry, donate gold to your alliance. That gives you Stark Tech, which is another thing we'll talk about in the next video. And it gives your alliance levels up to level 25. 
This makes no sense the way it currently is. And what I've suggested to them is they let players donate to Alliance, no matter what Alliance they're in, when they're level one, this helps them get their Stark to get faster again. Well, don't worry, if, if you hear Stark to get, what the heck is that? Don't worry about it. We'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, and it just kind of helps new players, if they're friends, they're all coming in the game together, they can start building that alliance up so that their alliance is level 20 by the time they hit 45, or just, uh, they, they don't want to scrap the alliance requirement, level 20 on that. There needs to be some sort of middle ground where that is getting unlocked faster, because what this encourages is just for new players to jump into an existing alliance that's already level 20 and have no idea what's going on. So I think it'd be better for them to kind of take off that donation requirement being level 50. Uh, and then let's talk about raids. So raids we've had a lot of fun with, and what I'll say is we learned something pretty interesting is that the Ultimus raids from difficulties one, two, three, four, all the way up to, I think is difficulty five, the cost to start the raids is very little. So what we were doing for a long time is we had all the raids running, and as long as you were able to get into the raid, do one node, you don't have to do a node, but as long as you got into the raid, you would get whatever rewards you get. And since you only needed 10%, we were able to get a lot of raid credits that way. And now we have Gamma Raid open, we have Ultimus Raid open, and we're now starting to get some really interesting materials, including the dreaded T3 ability materials. Um, this is just helping us put some new fun abilities on our characters faster than it would have been when I first started the game. So you really want to make sure you're an alliance that is pushing the harder alliance the higher, harder alliance raids and if they're not pushing the harder alliance raids you want to make sure they're pushing multiple raids at once you're getting as much raid credits as possible but eventually you need to be doing the harder raids so that you have the better materials that's it's like a literally a stopping point if you're not doing the better raids you're not getting your ability materials your characters aren't getting stronger so eventually you need to begin to alliance that's doing that um one fault i recently found was in the Gamma Raids. If we look at the rewards here, like this was the hardest raid we currently have. And it's giving us not even one sixth of an orb for doing 50%. I've suggested to them that they need to, they need to revamp these rewards. So at 50% on Gamma Raid one, you're getting at least one full orb. I think that's fair because the, the orbs, they have very old characters. It's just another catch up mechanic. So when players and alliances are doing at least 50% of the first Gamma difficulty, they should get a full orb. They don't need to go add the gold orb there. They should add raid credits here as well. I've given that feedback. Hopefully we'll hear back from them. I know that they're working on the new player experience a little bit here and there. Um, and that's it for raids. Oh, another thing about raids I've noticed is the season rewards. If you're not in an alliance that's already doing the cream of the crop, we've been raiding hard. We haven't hit milestone one, which means we're not even gonna be eligible for the ranked rewards, which is just awful. So I've also told them that like, hey, if an alliance is doing Ultimus 5, their season rewards should at least pay out all of the blue material. Because that's what Ultimus 5 brings you. It brings you up to like blue gear, just on the cuts of purple. So if you're doing Ultimus 5 every single day in your alliance, you should get up to Milestone 8. Let alone Milestone 1. Like we haven't hit 1 yet. We'll hit 1 by the end of the season. I don't think that's good enough. They should be giving out. These are uh, raid orb fragments. They should just be giving these out because it's a catching mechanic. And they should be getting these uh, blue gear orbs into the hands of their new players who are doing the appropriate difficulty. Um, and that'll lead us to Alliance War. Well, I'll be unlocking Alliance War in the next couple days. I won't be able to do it because our Alliance is not level 20. We might try and find a shell so we can show that experience. And in another video, we'll talk about what I'm going to do. But if you want the, the, the sh long and short of it right now, I'll be building up one or two characters that can hopefully pair together and take out some shield operative teams. You may have no idea what that means, but we'll talk about that in another video. I hope this found you well. I hope you're enjoying your journey or just enjoying this recap of what it's like to start the game over again. Uh, and if you have any other pain points for new players that you'd like for me to pass along to developers, please let me know. I do have a direct line with them. I've been playing the game for five years. I have a working relationship with them and I am part of that Envoy program. Speaking of programs I'm with, not with them, but with a completely different third party. I'm doing a Marvel Strike Force sponsorship, as you can see right above me. So if you haven't started the game yet and you're gonna start, use that code or the link that's gonna be in the description to download the game. Uh, play up to level 20, it really helps support the stream. I'd be very uh, grateful if people were able to do that. If you're an existing player, don't try and cheat the system. They, they have checks and balances for that. Don't try and cheat the system for me. Um, I appreciate all of you. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.